All right, let's try another example. Only this time, let's go in an opposite direction. Consider a three-phase transformer with a 20 to 1 turns ratio, designed to step down 220 kilovolts to 11 kilovolts. With the following simplified connection diagram, and we know the low voltage secondary side lags the high voltage primary side by 30 degrees. Can you form the nomenclature and draw the displacement diagram given the information you have in front of you? Let's do the easy part first. The clock notation for a transformer with a low voltage secondary side that lags the high voltage primary side by 30 degrees is clearly in the one o'clock group. Let's take a look at the simplified connection diagram to make sense of the primary and secondary configurations. A high voltage primary seems to be a continuous chain. A no dot to C dot, C no dot to B dot, B no dot back to A dot. We're clearly dealing with a delta configured primary. This being said, it's a little different from the DYN11 we just looked at since we're now going from A to C to B rather than A to B to C. Line to line voltage one to two is applied to inverted winding B. Line to line voltage two to three is applied to winding C inverted. And finally, line to line voltage three to one is applied to inverted winding A. Long story short, the high voltage side is a delta, so you get a capital D. The low voltage secondary appears to tie together all the non-polarity ends of the three windings and bring this out as a fourth neutral wire. Understandably, this is a Y-configured low voltage secondary with a neutral, so you got lowercase yn. Thus, the nomenclature would indicate that this is a DYN1 transformer. The displacement diagram would illustrate the high voltage delta as a triangle pointed straight up and down, and the low voltage secondary is a Y tilted 30 degrees to the right. All right, try this last example problem on for size, which might not be as easy as you think. Consider a transformer with a 1 to 20 turns ratio designed to step up 11 kilovolts to 220 kilovolts with a Y-configured low voltage primary and a delta-configured high voltage secondary where the high voltage output leads the low voltage input by 30 degrees. Now, before you rush off and screw this up, let me tell you something up front. The answer is not YND11. Pay attention to the dramatic emphasis I'm placing on certain terms. I say again, consider a step up transformer with a Y configured low voltage primary input and a delta configured high voltage secondary output where the high voltage output leads the low voltage input by 30 degrees. Let me remind you that the standard nomenclature format indicates the high voltage side first in capital letters, the low voltage side second in lowercase letters, and the phase shift of the low voltage with respect to the high voltage side using clock notation. For a majority of these examples, we've been assuming a high voltage primary to low voltage secondary step down transformer. Here we're clearly dealing with something not matching that previous format. It's a step up transformer. What's the primary input for a step up, low voltage or high voltage? What's the secondary output for a step up, low voltage or high voltage? Aha. Additionally, what does the standard nomenclature assume to be the reference when considering phase shift, high voltage or low voltage? If we were to use standard nomenclature, which we are going to, we need to express the delta configured high voltage secondary output side first as capital D. The Y configured low voltage primary input side with the neutral second using lowercase yn, and then reference low voltage input with respect to high voltage output, not the other way around. If high voltage output leads low voltage input by 30 degrees, this is the same thing as saying low voltage input lags high voltage output by 30 degrees we're clearly dealing with a one o'clock transformer. Thus, this one to 20 step up transformer is also a DYN1, the exact same designation as our previous example, only it's being run in reverse. Does this or does this not make sense? If you've been paying attention to the standard nomenclature format, it does make sense because transformers are bi-directional in nature. A 20 to one step down transformer with a delta configured high voltage primary input and a Y configured low voltage secondary output, where low voltage output lags high voltage input by 30 degrees, i.e. a DYN1, is a one to 20 step up transformer with a Y configured low voltage primary input and a delta configured high voltage secondary output, where high voltage output leads low voltage input by 30 degrees.
i.e. also DYN1, for one important reason, that reason being the term's primary input and secondary output are dependent upon application, whereas the term's high voltage and low voltage are not. I would suggest taking a moment to cool your brain after that one. If you survive this last example problem with your dignity still intact, you do indeed understand standard three-phase AC transformer nomenclature format. Now, some of you might be worried that this lecture is just about wrapping up and I haven't gone over all 16 recognized arrangements of regular Y and Delta configurations in exhausting detail, let alone the additional recognized 10 zigzag bonus configurations. The reason I placed a lot of emphasis on the 0, 1, 11, and 6 groups in the examples is because that's what you're most likely going to run across in the field and only in the oddest of odd occasions will you ever run into their mutant cousins. And even if you do run across something like, let's say, YD5, that's undoubtedly a Y-configured high-voltage side, a Delta-configured low-voltage side, such that the low-voltage side lags the high-voltage side by 5 times 30 or 150 degrees. See? Too easy. It's just three parts. High voltage in all caps, low voltage in lowercase, phase shift of the low voltage side with respect to the high voltage side using clock notation where each hour position represents 30 degrees. Now I know the comments are just going to be full of oh so polite requests in all caps awash with spelling errors like, sir, I demand you must now tell star star square root three phase transformer with square root two o'clock phase shift without using math, phaser spelled wrong and confusing electric. I await your response, exclamation point. But I am leaving the rest of these rarities as examples for you to work out on your own using the tools I gave you today. Really, the intended purpose of this lecture was not to slog through the Transformer dungeon and slay every goblin, giant spider, gelatinous cube, and dragon in it, but rather to simply introduce Transformer nomenclature, displacement diagrams, and simplified connection diagrams on an introductory level. Again, in ordinary circumstances, most of the time you'll have a simplified connection diagram on the transformer nameplate available, and it's up to you to interpret it properly and hook it up exactly as illustrated, with zero points being awarded for creativity. Maybe if I've got time, which I won't, so don't hold your breath, I'll publish some short videos featuring specific examples of three-phase AC transformer configurations in greater detail. This being said, I should at least briefly describe a zigzag or a Z connection before bringing this lecture to a close. Zigzags are kind of like Ys, or if you're an idiot, stars, only they have double the number of windings for each phase shift, such that if you're super, super desperate for a super weird phase shift or an odd voltage magnitude, or you just want to confuse somebody, you can use part of one winding from one phase and part of another winding from another phase to create the desired phase shift and or magnitude. Since this is difficult to describe verbally, it's perhaps worthy of one more illustrated example. Let's take a look at a random configuration like YZ11. At least the nomenclature is easy enough to interpret now that you know how it works. The high voltage side is Y configured. The low voltage side uses a zigzag connection, which I'll explain in a moment, and the low voltage side leads the high voltage side by 30 degrees. The high voltage side is configured like a standard Y, with non-dotted terminals forming the central node of a Y. Too easy. Now comes the hard part. The low voltage side using a zigzag connection has two windings per phase. For a total of six. High voltage winding capital A maps to both low voltage windings, lowercase a1 and a3. Similarly, high voltage winding capital B maps to both low voltage windings, lowercase b1 and b3. And finally, high voltage winding capital C maps to both low voltage windings, lowercase c1 and c3. For the sake of argument, let's say both the low voltage windings have one to one turns ratio with a high voltage input such that if we're making use of light industrial 60 hertz three-phase AC characterized by 120 volts line to neutral, 280 volts line to line, both A1 and A3 would be 120 volts at an angle of zero degrees. Both B1 and B3 would be 120 volts at an angle of negative 120 degrees. And finally, both C1 and C3 would be 120 volts at an angle of 120 degrees. I found one way of effectively illustrating the result of a zigzag connection is to first draw the phasers for each low voltage winding independently rather than grouping them on one diagram. I should additionally remind you that not everything you see on the internet is true. Case in point, there are startlingly incorrect depictions of zigzag connected transformers floating around out there that sometimes appear in otherwise reputable trade magazines and textbooks. Be warned. A properly configured YZ11 connection ties together the dotted ends of A3, B3, and C3, 
not the non-dotted ends, the dotted ends. And then rather sticking with the respective phases, the non-dotted end of B3 is joined to the non-dotted end of A1. The non-dotted end of C3 is joined to the non-dotted end of B1. And finally, the non-dotted end of A3 is joined to the non-dotted end of C1. This is where it's helpful to have drawn the six low voltage phasers independently. Since we're using the coils A3, B3, and C3 inverted, we can draw these inverted phasers as well. The inversion of A3 is 120 volts at an angle of 180. The inversion of B3 is 120 volts at an angle of 60 degrees. And the inversion of C3 is 120 volts at an angle of negative 60 degrees. Now, just join the appropriate phasers head to tail. Line one with respect to the neutral is inverted B3 plus A1, or 208 volts at an angle of 30 degrees. Line two with respect to neutral is inverted C3 plus B1, or 208 volts at an angle of negative 90. And finally, line three with respect to neutral is inverted A3 plus C1, or 208 volts at an angle of 150. If you want to think of it this way, a zigzag is kind of like a Y with bent arms. In this case, the low voltage side reference phase to neutral voltage is clearly leading the high voltage side by 30 degrees, as you'd expect for an 11 o'clock transformer. All right, before we bring this lecture to a close, let me at least attempt to partially answer an important question about three phase transformers that might be burning in the back of your mind. That question is this, why? Why are we doing this? Why are we going from delta to delta, y to y, y to delta, delta to y, and sometimes z and back again? This question has many, many answers, ranging from the simple to the complex. On a superficial level, three phase transformers play the exact role single phase transformers do, which is step up or step down voltage. Using this initial perspective, we can say it makes more economical sense to generate power at low voltage than step it up to transmit it and it's much safer to step it down at the point of use. If we were to use transformers with anything other than the one-to-one -one turns ratio that I employed for a majority of these examples, it'd be super easy to demonstrate that three-phase transformers can do this as well. This is true, but it actually goes a lot deeper than that. If we were to start expanding our perspective, in addition to stepping up and down voltage and isolating the primary and secondary voltage, a three-phase AC transformer can also change the configuration of a three-phase AC system. For example, you can change a three-wire delta configuration to a four-wire Y, a three-wire Y, or vice versa. If you don't have a neutral and you need a neutral, you can create one. If you got a neutral and you want to get rid of it, you can make it disappear. Beyond adding or subtracting a wire, dependent upon application, a delta might have certain advantages over a Y, whereas in other applications, a Y configuration might have certain advantages over a delta. Certain transformer configurations aren't as susceptible to electrical harmonics, which are like additional higher frequency sinusoidal waveforms superimposed on the fundamental frequency. Additionally, as we'll learn in later lectures on symmetric component analysis and protective relays, a fault on one side of a transformer when configured in a certain fashion might get trapped on one side of the transformer, thereby offering a degree of robustness to the larger generation, collection, transmission, and distribution system. Finally, if we were to fully expand our perspective about the purpose of three-phase transformers, it really is all about phase shift. As we'll learn in later lectures on AC transmission, power lines are not the idealized zero ohm unreactive conduits you may think they are, and at risk of over oversimplifying it, it often necessitates a phase shift from one end to another to push power to its intended direction. Lest you think that phase shift is only important to AC applications, phase shift has other important applications inside high voltage DC transmission which is essentially the large-scale rectification of AC to DC, transmittal over long distances, and then the subsequent inversion of DC back to AC at the point of use. Given ordinary rectified three-phase AC on the DC link, there's a noticeable ripple, which may cause unwanted harmonics. However, rectifying the original unshifted AC, along with the output of a Y to delta transformer with a 30-degree phase shift, it noticeably smooths out the rectified result such that much, much less ripple is observed and result in harmonics reduced. We'll examine this and many other applications of three-phase transformers in later lectures. Until then, that's it for now. In conclusion, this lecture examined three-phase transformers, electrical devices used to step up, step down, isolate, change the electrical configuration, and phase shift three-phase AC voltage. 
We additionally learned to interpret standard three-phase AC transformer nomenclature and simplified connection and displacement diagrams and took a look at a handful of representative examples. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.